Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create realistic whirling water using Blender's fluid system and a vortex force field. Let's get started. To make the glass, press Shift A and add a cylinder. Press Tab to go into edit mode. Select the top face and move it up along the z-axis. Then press S to scale it up just a little. Press X and delete the face. Now, press Ctrl R and scroll the mouse wheel to add five loop cuts. Hold down Alt and click on the bottom edge loop to select it. Then press Ctrl B to bevel the edge. In the panel at the bottom left, increase the number of segments to four for a smoother bevel. Go to the Modifier tab and add a Solidify modifier to give the glass some thickness. Set the thickness value to 0.1. Go back to Object Mode and apply the modifier. Switch to Edit Mode again and add a loop cut on the top face. Move it up slightly by pressing G and Z. Then bevel this edge with Ctrl B. Select the inner bottom face. Press Ctrl and the plus key to expand the selection. Press numpad 1 to switch to front view. Then press Z and choose wireframe mode. Move the selection up slightly on the Z axis using G and Z. Switch back to solid view and object mode. Right click and choose shade smooth. Finally, rename the cylinder to glass in the outliner. All right, let's create the water mesh. Go into Edit Mode, select the inner bottom face of the glass, then press Ctrl and the Plus key to expand the selection. Press Shift-D to duplicate it. Then press P and choose Selection to separate it into a new object. Go back to Object Mode, and now you'll see it as a separate object. Rename it Water. In the Outliner, Hide the glass by clicking the eye icon. Go back to edit mode with the water selected. Select the edge loop and press F to create a face. Open the mesh overlays menu and turn on face normals. If you don't see them, it's likely because they're facing the wrong way. In wireframe mode, you'll notice the normals are pointing inward, which will cause problems during the fluid simulation. To fix this, press A to select all faces. Then press Alt-N and choose Recalculate Outside. This flips the normals to the correct direction. Back in Object Mode, right-click and choose Shade Auto Smooth to fix the shading. Make the glass visible again by clicking the eye icon in the Outliner. Select the glass, add a Subdivision Surface modifier and set the viewport level to 2 for smoother edges. Finally, select the water mesh, press S, and hold Shift to scale it down slightly. Alright, now it's time to add the fluid simulation. Start by adding a cube to the scene. Switch to wireframe mode and scale the cube so that it fully surrounds the glass. This cube will become the fluid domain. Go to the Physics Properties tab and add a fluid system to the cube. Set the fluid type to Domain and the domain type to Liquid. The domain is a box-shaped object that holds the fluid. It controls the resolution, simulation type, and all the physics settings. Without a domain, the fluid can't be simulated. Set the resolution to 96. This value controls the details of the simulation. A higher value gives more realistic results, but will take longer to bake. Now select the water mesh and add a fluid system to it as well. Set the fluid type to Flow, the flow type to Liquid, and the flow behavior to Geometry. This means the exact shape of the mesh will emit fluid into the simulation. At this point, you'll see liquid particles that match the shape of the water mesh. When you play the simulation, the fluid will flow into the domain and interact with it. But for now, the liquid will just fall freely. We'll fix that to keep the water inside the glass. To keep the liquid inside the glass, select the glass and add a fluid system. Set the fluid type to Effector, 
and the effector type to collision. Now, when you play the simulation, the liquid will stay inside the glass. Let's add a vortex force field to make the liquid spin. Press Shift A, go to Force Fields, and choose Vortex. Make sure the vortex is placed at the center and slightly below the glass. In the Force Field settings, set the shape to Point. This makes the force spread outward evenly in all directions. When you play the simulation, the vortex will start rotating the fluid. At first, the strength might be too high and cause the fluid to overflow. Reduce the strength value to 0.2 and play the simulation again. You may notice the fluid still intersects the glass and doesn't collide correctly with the surface. To fix this, select the glass and increase the surface thickness value. This setting tells Blender how far the fluid should stay from the surface of the collision object. Select the vortex and go back to the force field settings. Set the power value to 0.5. The power value controls how the force strength changes with distance from the force origin. The higher the number, the faster it fades. You may notice that the simulation plays very slowly. This is because we're using a high resolution simulation and the cache type is set to replay. Replay mode calculates the simulation in real time as you play it, which can slow things down. To improve performance, change the cache type to All. This will bake the entire simulation at once. Then click Bake All. It may take a longer time depending on your computer specification. Once it's baked, the playback will be much smoother. Just remember, whenever you change a simulation setting, you'll need to rebake it. Now let's animate the vortex force to gradually lose strength and prevent the fluid from overflowing. Open the field weights panel. Hover over the vortex weight setting and press I to insert a keyframe at frame 100. Then go to frame 150, set the vortex weight to 0, and insert another keyframe. Click Free All to clear the previous cache and rebake the simulation. When you play the simulation, you'll see the liquid no longer overflow. Now, the vortex will affect the fluid until frame 100 and then gradually stop influencing the simulation. There's another issue. After the vortex effect, the liquid appears to gain volume. This happens because the simulation adds more particles as it continues. To fix this, clear the existing cache and open the liquid particles panel. Go to frame 150, click the small dot next to the particle radius value, and insert a keyframe. Then move to frame 151, set the particle radius to 0.6, and insert another keyframe. Also, set the simulation end frame and the timeline end to 300. This gives the simulation more time to gradually lose volume. After that, bake the simulation again. After baking, when you play the simulation, you'll notice that the fluid returns to its original level once the vortex force effect fades away.
Now press the Z key and switch to solid mode. Hide the glass in the viewport. Also hide the water mesh both in the viewport and render. We'll now focus on the liquid mesh generated by the simulation. Right-click on the liquid mesh and choose Shade Smooth. Go to the first frame. You'll notice that the surface looks rough. This can cause shading problems at the beginning of the simulation. To fix it, go to the Domain Settings and open the Mesh panel. This panel allows you to control the appearance of the fluid mesh. First, delete the current cache and switch the cache type to Replay. This allows you to see the changes live as you adjust the settings. Set the smoothing positive value to 20 and the negative value to 10. These settings help the mesh look smoother and cleaner. I want the simulation to start with a smooth surface, then become more detailed and chaotic in the middle, and finally return to a smooth look at the end. To do that, we'll animate the smoothing values. Go to frame 30 and insert keyframes for both the positive and negative values. Then move to frame 70, change both values to 1, and insert new keyframes. Press Shift D to duplicate the keyframes from frame 70 and move them to frame 120. Then duplicate the first keyframes and move them to frame 250. Now switch the cache type to All. Create a folder on your desktop and name it Simulation Data. Choose this folder as the output location for the simulation data. If you don't set a custom folder, Blender will delete the simulation data when the file is closed. Then, click the Bake button. Once the baking is complete, play the simulation and review the result. It should now start smooth, get detailed, and then return to a clean look. It looks great. Now it's time to work on shading and rendering. Unhide the glass in the viewport. Press the Z key to switch to Render Preview mode. Go to the Render Properties tab and choose the Cycles Render Engine. Cycles is a physically-based renderer that creates realistic lighting and materials, making it ideal for photorealistic images and animations. However, it takes longer to render compared to other engines. If you have a good graphics card, set the render device to GPU for faster rendering. Set the maximum samples to 32 for both the viewport and the final render. Viewport samples determine how many times each pixel is rendered in the 3D viewport. Higher values give a clearer preview, but they take more time. Render samples control the quality of the final image. More samples reduce noise and improve quality, but also increase render times. Also, make sure to enable the denoise option for the render. This option helps to reduce noise in the final image by smoothing out the pixels. Next, let's add an environment texture for more realistic lighting. Go to the World Properties tab, Click the Color node and select Environment Texture. Open an HDRI image. An HDRI is a type of environment texture with realistic lighting data. You can download any HDRI for free from the web. Set the light strength value to 0.3. Now let's add materials for the glass and water. Select the glass object and go to the Material Properties tab. Click the New button to create a new material. In the surface section, add a glass shader. Set the roughness to zero, which will give the glass a completely transparent look. Next, select the water mesh and add another glass shader. Set the roughness to zero and the IOR value to 1.333. The index of refraction controls how much light bends when passing through materials like glass or water. For water, the IOR value is 1.333. Play the simulation 
and check the final result. If you're happy with how it looks, you can render the simulation. Press Shift A to add a camera. Then press Control Alt Numpad 0 to align the camera to your view. Lock the camera to the view using the side toggle. Select the glass and adjust the perspective to your liking. Go to the Output Properties tab to set the render resolution. For Full HD, keep the resolution at 1080 pixels. You can also adjust the frame rate. Set the frame rate to 25 FPS, which gives smooth motion and is standard for European video formats. Under the Output panel, choose a folder to save the animation. Select MPEG as the file format, which is a video format. In the Encoding panel, choose MPEG4 as the container. Then, go to the Render menu and select Render Animation. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.